Hi, this is Michael Arias, and welcome to another US dollar analysis video. I'll also be covering the euro. And I'm actually, I've actually been doing a lot of analysis recently, and a lot of uh, things have come out that are really starting to boggle my mind in terms of the waves and what I'm seeing on the chart. It's actually very interesting and the beauty of it is I'm actually able to explain it to you in a in a coherent kind of way where it hopefully makes sense to you. And to me it's actually it's kind of astonishing how e waves can be so complicated, right? And and complicated in a way that it's almost like e waves tell you that it's going to be a complicated time whenever an e wave's coming and and I'm going to I'm going to explain why so you look at this chart right now and you can see that I've changed my labels somewhat I've actually had to go back and rethink all of the analysis for this e wave and I and I and it makes total sense that this is what's happening but wait until you see the euro video cuz that's where it gets really weird so obviously there's been a lot going on in the economy since 2008 and it's very interesting how this wave e now i'm pointing towards a straight five wave move to the upside incoming right so it's going to be nasty i reckon it's going to definitely cause major problems uh, especially in terms of the economy, but stock market, etc. But interest rates, and, and I've been thinking about this, how does this all fit in to interest rates? Something wasn't quite right. And now I realize what it is. And thankfully, I managed to make more sense of it, at least in my own opinion, right? So let's go to the daily chart for a moment. I'll explain to you how I see this entire correction since GFC. Okay. So we had a wave one. How do I look at this wave one is pretty simple. You just had a one, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, five. Okay. That's fine. That, that looks like a pretty straight five wave move. The funny part is what happens after that. So you have an A wave. And you have this B wave here, which is a type two expanded zigzag, right? And then you have a C wave. And then you get what is a massive D wave, right? And I believe that's what we've just seen end recently is a massive D wave. And you might be wondering how on earth is, does that even make sense? What about the Euro? The Euro chart is actually different. And this whole, you know, inverse correlated idea that these charts are like similar, but they're, they're actually not similar. They're different in the way that wave two has corrected. And, uh, and it's actually way more crazier when you look at the Euro. But I thought I'd give you this one first because it just looks like a straight expanded correction, which means that we're going to have to see a pullback to some area. I'm not sure where that is on this chart. I do have more of an idea on the euro and I'll tell you why in a minute. But we, we should see a five wave move down. It's going to be the end of this correction before we get an explosive move to the upside, which I believe will correlate with the end of a pullback in the interest rates that we're going to see now, potentially, just for a little while. Um, and then explosive interest rates move up, explosive US dollar to the upside. Okay, but there is one more move down here than I'm expecting for the US dollar. So that definitely adds credence to the USD CAD chart. That makes more sense compared to what I had earlier. So it's actually going to be a lot worse than I thought. And I think that what's going to happen in interest rates is definitely going to be one of the major causes of this problem that's coming. So things are starting to sort of fit into place now. Um, 
yeah, I could. I, I always wondered about this move down here, and now that makes perfect sense. This one definitely is cool because it, it really shows the type two zigzag. And then this is just a straight zigzag, this wave D. And it's to me, it's baffling because in the US dollar, the price action since basically like 2015 was entirely the B wave of this D wave, right? But when you look at this price action in the Euro, it's actually, it's, it's spelling out a different picture. So let me just remind you that this, this is an A, a B, a C, D, E. So this is a five wave move. So C waves are always five wave moves and E waves are always five wave moves. But I always wondered why these five wave moves are looking so weird on the chart. I had so much trouble trading them. It was, it was up and down with this whole thing. And I, I'm beginning to realize now why, and I'll explain it now. Let's head over to the Euro chart and I'll explain it everything. Don't worry. So here we are with the Euro chart. Now this is different. Why? The first move is a three wave move, wave one. Then we had a wave two. Then we had a huge wave three to the downside. And then we had a corrective process, which only led to a very small uh, zigzag in the end to create wave five. So it was kind of like what you'd call, if you're an Elliotitian, in a leading diagonal, basically, in a sense, right? Me, I call it a type one week five wave move. And it just means that, you know, it the, the wave one, three, and five move down in zigzags. Now, this is where it gets weird. So wave A was actually the move that was supposed to be a five wave move. I always wondered why I had so much trouble dissecting this pattern. It's because you've got forces in the Euro trying to make it a zigzag and you've got forces in the, the US dollar trying to make it a five wave move. Therefore you get distortions. Now, these are the reasons why distortions have occurred since this time. Well, well, since the beginning, really since 2008. And it doesn't surprise me because you're dealing with the Euro, the, you know, the European central banks versus the federal reserve. I mean, you could talk about the issues that, that, that have been happening around the world. I mean, it doesn't surprise me really. But it's just one of those times that everything's just really complicated and and weird. So people, I remember people saying this looks like textbooks Elliot five wave move, and I always wondered that can't be right. There's something so wrong with that pattern. I literally spent so much time dissecting it. Now it's starting to make sense. So A, B, so in in you know, obviously this is a different correction now. We're looking at something, this correction is being used differently by the Euro. A, B, C, and now this is where it gets super interesting, right? So we have a D wave, a sharp D wave, right? And the funny thing about it, this is not even an expanded zigzag. It's actually a regular zigzag. It just doesn't retrace that much. So let me zoom into it so I can show you I'll explain to you every subdivision that I, I've, I've noticed. It's just amazingly bizarre. Excuse me, my internet's a bit slow. So this might take a couple of seconds to load. There we go. So, okay. So first of all, you have straight five wave move, which is definitely weak. Um, for sure it's weak, right? But it's not, it's not a type one, it's a type two. So the, the, the waves are moving down in five waves, right? So you've got one, two, expanded correction there. All right, so I'll mark these out. Expanded, two, you've got three, four, right? Alternation between two and four, and then five. Okay, so that's wave A. And then you've got a small wave B in brackets, right? And then you've got zigzag one, and then wave two, zigzag th for the wave three, wave four and then zigzag for wave five. Amazing. That is 
just amazing. No wonder there was just so much confusion around these patterns. Because in the US dollar, this move down was the C wave of the larger D wave, right? And in, 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 in the Euro, it was a D wave, uh, zigzag, just the whole thing. It's like, that is insane. Like, I can't believe how insane that is. So really now, because of, because of this sort of finding, it literally gives me an upside target. More than likely, it, it can't be previous wave four because that ended low. It has to be the 0.618, right? So it has to be 1.38822 roughly, right? And that means that we're going to see euro strength impulsively, more than likely impulsively, um, because we're in an E wave of a wave two in an E wave. And I think this thing needs to move, right? It needs to finish its correction and it needs to, to drop to the downside like a sack of potatoes. And that there to me explains that what's going to happen now more than likely is going to be a pretty big shock followed by a reversal. And that's going to confuse. And it's also going to lead to probably that crash that I've been talking about for a while. Now, I've also got some ideas on how this is going to affect the stock market. So I will be posting that when I'm ready. Um, I have been on a roll lately simply because this stuff's just sort of illuminated itself to, to me. And after having such a long break from the charts, uh, especially fiat currencies, now I've come back with fresh set of eyes and I'm starting to see the differences and all the experiences kind of help me just understand that there are certain things that you just can't do on a chart. You can't force a pattern to be something that it's not. And I know that I've been doing that in the past. That's why there was always these wave revision type videos that I'd make. But these days it's more of a discovery based on experience and, you know, knowledge of the waves, right? Obviously I teach Aris wave. I'm having uh, training sessions in Jan. If you're interested, let me know. But just in reality, it's it's just amazing to see this because now we have an understanding of what's going to happen more than likely. It's going to get crazy somewhat. And I do think that this might lead to some kind of a pump in the markets, which to me is just my, my head's exploding with ideas and making me think, wow, how's this going to affect cryptos? Because if we had a fairly decent move up in 2017 and and that was just a wave a you know what well, supposedly not even supposed to be impulsive but now we've got to go higher the only thing that i could think that might you know not make it so crazy in cryptos is um interest rates having already risen the way they have and also that we are still kind of in a corrective process in cryptos long term still nonetheless there are moves to be made but to me it's just interesting how uh, you know i've got to bring all that together in some way that actually makes sense not in some way that it's just like haphazardly put together videos no i don't do that anymore but this is i suppose food for thought an idea I could be wrong, you know, I'm dealing with probabilities, but to me, this stands out as just so interesting, you know, making so much sense of the last sort of, you know, five, five, six years of, of price action. That's been weird. And even longer than that, if you think about it. So I'll leave it at that, but just have a think about that because there's going to be a lot of, uh, updates coming out that are based on this type of knowledge and hopefully um yeah we, we get somewhere interesting and yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll catch you in the next one